Hey guys, my name is Callum and welcome to my Doctor Who Series 11 reviews where every week I will be discussing my opinions on the latest episode alongside a very special guest. Just before we get started, a couple of notes. If the sound quality isn't as good as it normally is when I'm doing uh, videos on my own, that's because I'm talking to all the people I've got on over the next few weeks over Skype, so the audio quality isn't perfect, but you should be able to hear us all right. Also, don't expect a load of like pictures and videos um, over uh, us talking like there is for some of my other sort of discussion talky videos, just because obviously I'm hoping to get out one of these for each episode, so that's like a video every week, like without fail, hopefully. So I kind of can't spend too much time editing them. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoy hearing what we have to say. Um, and without further ado, let's get started. Hey guys, and welcome back to another Doctor Who Series 11 review, where today I'm here with George, who you probably uh, know better by the name Ace Creeper, uh, who's a brilliant uh, YouTuber, if you haven't already uh, checked out his channel, do recommend doing that. Um, but yeah, today we're going to be reviewing the penultimate episode of Series 11, It Takes You Away. Um, so yeah, I'll start how I normally start. Um, yeah. By asking you, George, what kind of were your expectations going to, into this episode? Well, um, my expectations were incredibly high with this one. Um, and I was all down to um, Doctor Who TV. Uh, really, like, you know, exciting it up. Like, this is an episode you do not want to miss. Mm. Um, like, a really, like, heavily, really pushing on the idea of that it's a... It's going to be a big episode. You you want to watch it. There's stuff happens in this, and I think my initial excitement was like, oh, what you know, what could possibly happen? Yeah. Um. So I was yeah, I was definitely very very excited going into it. Yeah. Yeah. Um. That, yeah. You make a good point there. Actually, it, they did definitely have a lot of build up. I think originally, like from the next time trailer and that before all the sort of previews from Doctor Who TV came out, there wasn't. I wasn't really sure what to expect. Like it, mm. the trailer gave very little away and the sort of description for it as well uh, didn't give much away but yeah definitely after those uh, previews came out from uh, Doctor Who TV and a few other uh, places it really sort of uh, built the episode up to have I had like really high expectations going into it um, and yeah I think uh, obviously we'll get on to whether uh, it met those expectations but basically so if you haven't seen it which I'm assuming you have if you've watched this if you're watching okay, if you right? haven't go and watch it <laughs> yeah definitely. um but basically uh it was probably the most uh ambitious episode we've had so far in terms mm. of like the complexity of it and i mean i'd say like rosa was pretty ambitious in terms mm. of sort of how much was riding on it like it could have really gone one of two ways and thankfully it turned out really good but mm. i feel like this this was definitely sort of uh the most ambition ambitious in terms of like the plot do you think yeah I, th I definitely think so i think it went for a it was a very different vibe which i really like when doctor who can kind of jump into loads of different genres whereas you know although doctor who's already sci-fi this really felt like a proper 90s sci-fi like yeah. a traditional type of that, that feeling in that genre i thought they did that um, brilliantly well but that was a great aim for that because we haven't really had that much in Doctor Who before I would only describe this as kind of one of the more you know out there episodes of Matt Smith's era I feel like it's comparable yeah. to like um, the God Complex or something like that where it's just a bit odd and a bit has like um, kind of like mythological sort of meanings behind it yeah um, which yeah I really I, I quite like that element of it yeah it did it did feel quite sort of <clears throat> sort of Moffat-y in terms of how sort of complicated mm. it was um mm. and obviously with Moffat it it sometimes benefited the episode and sometimes didn't and I think yeah. I think with this one it definitely uh made for a good episode even if on the f on my first watch I wasn't entirely convinced I'm not sure about you um 
but it's definitely- yeah, I, I was I was quite similar in that respect. I think um, there was a few reasons. I mean, I will we'll come on to that, but I think there was a few yeah. reasons why at first I think my, I was I was a little bit disappointed. But then on rewatch, I think actually just it was a pretty good episode. and It was pretty strong yeah. um, in terms of that. Yeah. So yeah, getting on to the plot now. We basically have. I'll try and explain it as best I can because it was pretty. Oh common. yeah. <laughs> but, uh, the TARDIS lands in Norway, and the Doctor and her friends find this little sort of cottage. Uh, where there's this girl uh, called Hannah um, living there on her own, no parents at all, um, and they discover this kind of portal uh, within the cottage that leads to this uh, kind of uh, otherworldly place called the Anti Zone, uh, uh, which uh, was quite um, interesting. Um, and eventually, they sort of get to this kind of alternate universe parallel world kind of thing uh where they discover hannah's dad alongside um hannah's mum who like we thought was dead um uh and basically uh alongside them we also have uh grace who obviously we haven't seen well we haven't seen properly since episode one obviously we saw her uh, briefly in arachnids and see her another episode as well and like um oh, i'm trying to think now i don't i don't think so i think it was just arachnids after yeah, yeah after she died yeah yeah so um obviously that was quite a, a a surprise to see her but it turns out in the end that hannah's mum and grace uh not who they uh who they are um and they're actually sort of these creations created by this world to sort of entice uh the doctor and all all them to kind of come in and it's basically one big trap um so yeah like i said pretty ambitious pretty complex story so yeah what did you think of the the overall story i what i really really liked about it is that unlike a lot of stories nowadays in doctor who i I didn't know what was going on until about halfway through and i really like that i feel like with episodes i mean like rosa straight away you know exactly what's going on and that's fine rosa's great in its own respect but i love the fact that this one just kept everything secret it was like there's a monster in the woods and a blind girl in the cottage and our father's disappeared a very very simple concept and then suddenly oh wait there's another like so this is the anti-zone which goes somewhere else entirely, which has a completely different story. So maybe they've escaped through here. Oh, there's another there's a mirror dimension, which is actually its own universe trying to appeal to people. It was very interesting because it, it kind of pulled the wall over your eyes and kept surprising you with new things. And I love when Doctor Who can do that because it keeps you on the edge of your seat. And I really am like, oh, what, what is actually going to happen with this episode? Because quite frankly, until about you know 35 minutes in, I had absolutely no clue. And I love that. I love not knowing. I love being able to just watch it and experience it as if I'm one of the characters in the episode. I love that. Yeah, yeah I, th- I think you make a good point there about them sort of pulling the wool over your eyes because I think, like I said, we didn't know much going into, into this episode, but I feel like we were sort of led to believe that it was all going to be centred around this monster in the ro- in the woods that kind of <laughs> takes you away, as the title suggests. But actually, like... It wasn't about anything on Earth at all. It was this complete mm-hmm. other dimension. And I think I think now having watched it, I feel like you could sort of interpret the title of the episode. I've I've just thought of this actually, um, in a different way. Like because obviously the like Solitract, I think it was called the other universe, had like uh like mm-hmm. family members that had like passed away of like like grace and obviously hannah's mum so i think they were sort of there to like i said to entice you and then obviously that's sort of how the solar tract kind of takes you away as it were i don't know what you think of that Um, yeah that's decent yeah yeah um so yeah i think like you said it was it it was one of those episodes where you kind of don't really know what's going on until like quite near towards the end which i feel like i I wasn't keen on on my first watch. I think possibly because a lot of this series so far has been pretty basic in terms of the plot. So it was kind of like hard to get back. I know we've had like complex stories before. Mm-hmm. Like you need to like all you need to do is take a look at like one of Moffat's stories. They were all pretty. 
Yeah, and- there's a great there's a great thing of getting a balance, isn't it? I think that's why that's what's great. I think sometimes Moffat could do a perfect complicated story, but a lot of the time he'd also make a story that's too complicated. I mean, look at series nine, that overall arc just didn't really, I mean, I don't think many people understand still what happened with that. Like, cause, no. you know, still a bit up in the air. And it's I don't not really what you want. Still... I don't, yeah, I don't think he knew. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, but I quite like the fact that they're trying to mix it a little bit. So the more basic series, but I like the occasional episode that can delve into something a little bit deeper and make the audience really think about it. Yeah. And I, like I said, I did, I did, I have come to appreciate that that now but I just think like originally it was kind of not jarring that makes it sound like a bad thing but like because we like like I said this series so far has been pretty simple like Mm. it 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 was a bit of you had to sort of get used to it again if you know what I mean because we've not had such a complex story in a while in my opinion I don't think um but yeah I've I've definitely like I just rewatched it now before uh coming on here and I've I've really enjoyed it, and I've really come to appreciate it after sort of hearing other people's opinions and kind of having uh, the last few days to kind of process it. I I do think it was a really brilliant episode. Um, so, were there any sort of uh, standout scenes for you uh, within the episode that you that you really liked? Um, I really like I really liked. Um... I really, I really liked. Well, first of all, I think the opening. I think just the shots and the direction looked gorgeous. Mm. But I think the one thing that everyone's going to look at with this episode, and I don't think anyone will disagree when I say that the emotional moment of like hiding Grace's face until oh, yeah. Graham is there, and the, the slow moving, and everyone could tell because you can look at the way she's dressed and you can go, yeah, it's going to be Grace. But the yeah. emotional build up to that. And the scene is just, I mean, everything with them is so emotional. It's so yeah. like, yeah, it's almost draining how good it is. Yeah, that was something I was going to mention. Like, I've just got in my notes in capital letters, Grace and Graham scenes, because they were just yeah. the highlight of the episode. Oh, um, that, yeah. Obviously, any scene that Bradley Walsh is in, he just steals the show. But like, paired alongside Grace, played, of course, by Sharon D. Clark as well. He's just fantastic. And I, mm-hmm. I know I said before that, Grace's return kind of came as a surprise but I I did actually see I think it was a couple of days before the episode aired I was just like browsing IMDB yeah and I saw <laughs> the cast the cast list for uh it takes you away was Sharon D Clark and I was like oh yeah. like and my two thoughts were oh maybe it's a mistake or it was going to be like similar to arachnids where he j- she just appears like in his head again um but yeah, yeah, but when I was watching it, I'd completely, I don't know why, I'd just completely forgotten about that. So when it did happen, I was, I was like, com- completely shocked. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I completely agree with that. I think, um, I think, in my, I know I knew kind of straight away that I, I had the prediction that Grace was going to appear in the episode, yeah. um, especially with the focus on the sort of emotional side of it and everything. Mm. I... I really love the fact that it wasn't just an appearance, though. I love the fact that it was genuinely, it was her. I mean, and this, I, I talked about this briefly in my review, The and it was unintentional, the callbacks to Twice Upon a Time, where Bill very clearly says that, what is anyone but just a bunch of memories? And that's exactly what Grace is in this episode. So yeah. how how isn't she Grace? She is Grace. And how yeah. torturing is that? Because it is Grace, but there's kind of something behind it. And I really, really like uh that and i can imagine the same sort of thing happening with you know capaldi and um clara for example like if someone yeah, was him, that drive would have pulled him in and i really like that the similar sort of concept with that that it is just someone with the, all their memories so it practically is them yeah. but also at the same time it really isn't yeah yeah it's interesting you mentioned 12 and clara there i think mm. it, there was there's quite a few sort of combinations of people that it would have been interesting to see like what happened with Grace and uh, Graham with like you could imagine the same sort of thing happening with like uh, Clara and Danny I mean what I know Danny isn't the most loved character in the world mm-hmm. but it, mm-hmm. it would it would you know it, it would kind of go down the same route of it being yeah. so sort of torturous for Clara um, yeah. but, but yeah. the thing is what the difference with that is I think and it's just down to and there's one major compliment I have for this series is that anyone can criticise how you know how clean the dialogue is or how it works as a story but I genuinely care for these characters they are not yeah. characters to me they are people and I'm watching yeah. their lives and 
honestly, I could have I could have had two series with Clara and Danny and have a moment like this, and it wouldn't have felt the same. Yeah. It's Bradley Walsh's performance and the genuine connection those two characters have that just make it. And I was emotional watching this because I was like, oh my god, like for him. And I know we did, obviously it's Bradley Walsh; he's an actor, but the way he's putting this character forward is probably one of the saddest performances and emotional performances I've seen in New Who. I know there's a lot to compare there, but yeah. for a, for a companion to another to like a relationship with another human that is one of the strongest i mean you never got that with rose and mickey you never got that with clara and danny i never felt the same in that way that you can definitely tell graham really wants that to be grace but it just isn't yeah only slightly and i love that yeah and i think i think the fact that like i mean i know we've seen grace in like three individual episodes but the fact that we only saw her and graham's relationship like normally and properly in just that first episode i think that really sort of is a testament to mm. like how good their acting is the fact that we're so invested in that relationship even though we've only seen it once like uh, in that one episode i just think shows how brilliant they both are mm-hmm. yeah um, without, without a doubt. and i think that's one of chibnall's strength as well being able to develop, oh, yeah. develop characters i think people jump at it a bit much but i honestly think chibnall's done a great job mainly down to the character side of things yep there's flaws every series has flaws but i think one of the major gains of this series is the characters i think the characters are really well written uh put forward and their arcs have already been completed like i love these characters and i've not even had a full series with them i've not even had a full series by like previous new who standards this is nine episodes in and i yeah. love these characters yeah I, I adore them and i think they're great and i think I, I feel for them and they've already developed and i really really love that they feel real opposed to just words on paper and i love that yeah i think you've hit the nail on the head there i think it's it's interesting you mentioned the character arcs there i think we should uh mention i know it was only a so- short scene but we should mention uh the little scene at the end between ryan and graham yeah. uh graham finally getting that uh granddad like uh name from from ryan i thought um i did i feel like sort of a lot of uh fans have kind of had this expectation that it was going to be in the final episode and it was going to be a huge emotion emotional scene like one of them was going to sort of be about to die and and ryan would say it um Mm -hmm. and that would be sort of the last words like either that Ryan says or that Graham hears before one of them dies. I feel like people kind of built it up to be like a massive event that would take place at the end of the series. Yeah. Uh, and then it happened in uh, just at the end, like briefly, um, in quite a sort of uh, subtle, not, yeah, subtle, like understated scene. And I get like, I could understand if you were, if you kind of felt like, a bit let down by that because of those expectations he had but actually i think it does work like Mm. because of the the events of the episode and and all that it it kind of does work and i feel like although it probably would have been emotional like to have it um in the expectations that that a lot of fans had it i don't think it would have been as realistic if you know what i mean so i think it worked how they did it I really liked it. I thought it was very natural. I thought it was yeah. perfect. I, I, knowing the theories and the ideas that potentially what's going to happen in this final episode mm-hmm. um, is just... Uh, it, it, it makes us think that I'm glad they did it in this episode because I think the next episode is going to be so action-packed with loads of different things. I feel like the whole granddad thing didn't need to happen in that episode and I'm glad it happened in this one because not only did it come as a surprise but it didn't come as like any sort of one dying it was just a very touching emotional moment and a massive massive you know big up for those characters and i think just the look on graham's face when ryan says that is just so like oh it hits you it really does i love that again just a massive compliment to the writer and to the actors for being pulled that off amazing yeah i just loved how like ryan after he said it just tried to sort of brush it off like it wasn't a big deal uh like like with that line like oh you're going deaf in your old age uh i just thought it was brilliant uh mm-hmm. one other thing i wanted to mention actually uh to do with ryan again was it was i thought it was really nice to see him kind of taking the sort of parental role if you like like looking after hannah because i feel like mm. in the past especially in the witch finders uh like that role has usually been given to yaz 
and that's one of the things I really like about Yaza. It's like she's really caring and sort of motherly, which sounds a bit strange because she's quite young. But yeah. she, she's really good with kids. Um, and Ryan is quite the opposite. So I, I thought yeah. it was nice to kind of have that contrast between uh, him in this episode and Yaza in the last episode. Uh, mm-hmm. What do you think of that? I think, that's, I think that's a good comparison to make. I didn't really think of it like that. I, I quite liked... Um, Ryan's kind of connection with Hannah in this um I think that worked but I think again I've got my own reasonings for this and it's not a massive negative but I think with and we'll talk about it separately but I think the whole like the family thing like that them characters I wasn't as connected with in this episode unfortunately but I feel yeah. like I, I was quite happy with the way you know Ryan had that connection and that those moments but I couldn't help but feel that this episode could have happened without that family there and it would have been yeah, exactly the same. I was going to say that, actually. Yeah, I didn't care for the dads. You know, I liked the um, the fact that they've actually cast a blind actress and mm. they made it very authentic and I really liked that. It was very respectful in that sense. And I thought that kind of worked and I loved the moment with the Doctor writing something on the wall and saying it was something different and I really liked that because it was discreet but really like oh that 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 hit you yeah. like, that's that's awful but it's 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 right as well um yeah. and it's and it, it does add for stuff like that but i think they could have done a lot more with the opportunity of having a, a blind actress uh, playing a blind character for the episode i mean look at for example uh, under the lake and before the flood where we had an actual deaf actress play a deaf uh, character yeah. in doctor yeah. who and that served the purpose for the episode um you know she was able to read the lips of the ghosts she was able yeah. to there's a great scene cinematically where the sort of vibrations should be able to detect what's around her. That mm. stuff like that would have been great, and I don't feel we got that. I mean, it was like it, it, it's not as if it's not. I mean, it, it could sound like I'm like suggesting that they take advantage of it, but I think in general, if 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 the character you know is blind, that is a sort of vulnerability, and I, and I, and I do respect that element of it. Um, but I wish like they'd done a little bit more with it. Is all I'm saying, and I feel like the family as a whole just felt a little bit like padding for me really i feel like it could have just been an empty cottage um yeah. with scrollings on the wall and then they discover the mirror and then they go to and that sort of thing like the actual main emotional way it was between grace and graham and yeah. the mystery behind the whole solitary act the family didn't really have much to do after they found the solitary act was the second grace came into the picture the family was kind of pushed aside so yeah. i don't know it's kind of a mix with that but you know i wish they'd just done more with the family yeah, no, I think I do pretty much agree with you there. I think no matter what you think of Hannah and her family, I do think that scene where the doctor wrote on the wall, yeah. was like, I thought that was really sort of quite a, um, what's the word? Like, it really got, got to me, that scene, like, because you're thinking, oh, wow, like, yeah. that's the only way sort of they can kind of protect her, like, uh, by sort of, this sounds really horrible but like using her disability to as an advantage to sort of protect her if you know what i mean yeah yeah yeah, absolutely which which sounds really sort of horrible but i I think that's what made that scene so sort of tragic in a way um but yeah i think that was that was definitely my standout scene like in terms of like hannah and her family and that um even though it wasn't really like Hannah wasn't sort of involved in it, but it yeah. was um, I thought, I, Yeah, I really liked that scene. Um, so, yeah, is there any, anything else you want to mention to do with the like overall plot? I feel like we should uh, mention uh, briefly the solo track just in general. Like, what did you think of that as a concept overall? Uh, I liked it as a concept. I think it, um, it's one of those things that could definitely make a reappearance in the future. Oh, yeah. um, I think it's a very easy concept to understand and a very, a one that kind of makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought it was a bit cop out how the Doctor just knew straight away what it was. I feel like that should have been a little bit... Like maybe, maybe she thought it was something else and then it revealed itself and that that, you know, that sort of thing. And then she picked it up, actually, no, it isn't what I thought it was, you know? It feels like the Doctor's right quite a lot and I feel like you yeah, have a bit of a mix, you know, there and then. So I like that, but I think... I think I think generally the solid track overall was very, you know, it wasn't a villain. That's what I liked about it. Yeah. It wasn't a villain. It was just, it was something that wanted, you know, it, it wanted company. It wanted to understand our universe, but to do that, it would cost its own life as well as the person it brings along with it. And I really liked that element of it. It wasn't trying to be evil. It was trying to be friendly. 
Um, yeah. And I like that element of it. Yeah, definitely. I think it, it was sort of like uh, it was. It's interesting you mentioned how like um, you, it could be sort of uh, annoying that the doctor sort of knows all about it straight away, which I think is a uh, a problem that you have like every so often with Doctor Who. Like um, uh, one of the things I I loved about uh, an earlier episode, De- Demons of the Punjab, was how the Doctor got it wrong about about the Thajarians. Like she sort of assumed that they were villains because of sort of a couple of things that she'd heard about them. Yeah, yeah, but I know. Actually- I get that, that, that stuff like that is good, and I quite like when it does subvert it a little bit, and the Doctor yeah. is actually wrong. I just think um, this episode could have definitely benefited that from that because I think one of people's main criticisms is just the fact that she walked into a house, went, "Oh, what is it? Oh, that's what it is." Yeah, and it's like that. That is it, concrete. I mean, like she got it right, bang on first time with a th- yeah, with a second's she... thought, and I think it's a bit like, yeah. I mean, uh, what made what made it kind of frustrating was the fact that origin, like at the beginning, she she didn't like have any idea what it was. Mm-hmm. But then she seemed to find out really quickly and on very little sort of information. Uh, yeah. So yeah, it, 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 I mean, I did like those scenes about like her saying, "Oh, it was a." bedtime story my grandma used to tell me mm. um, like I thought they were quite funny and very sort of doctory yeah. but yeah I, I can see why you'd be sort of annoyed at that because I think it is something that happens in Doctor Who like every so often yeah. and it, but I, I mean you, you kind of you, you know you kind of have a, you can't have everything being perfect you're going to have a few yeah. slip ups everywhere but you know it wasn't that noticeable it wasn't a major thing that I pulled out of it there was one thing that I pulled out of it that I'm assuming we're going to get to at some point but you know, yeah. I think I think um, that is that. I mean, is, is a quick like, one line thing about um, just knowing it straight away. I didn't have a major problem with because it, it was just what it was. It you know, it wasn't yeah. wasn't anything that took out took us out of the moment or anything. Yeah. I, I thought it was. It, it just I think reflecting on it, I think hey, that's just something I would have done better. Yeah, and the whole thing, like like I said, with her with her grandma telling her the story, like. It was very clearly yeah. exposition, but it was entertaining exposition. It adds to canon as well. I'm happy when yeah. it does something like that. You know, it's something new um, about, you know, Gallifrey and Law and that sort of thing. And I know a lot of people will be very happy the fact that it kind of canonized looms. Um, but, you know, I <laughs> we'll see. Yeah. Um, I just, you know, we'll, but I think people, you know, will pick up on that and go, oh, that's quite interesting. So, the, the, you know, you know, is she joking? Is she having a bit of a humorous remark? Or is she being serious? Yeah. I quite like that idea of, like, it's actually quite open to whether or not people want to believe that or not. Mm, yeah. Okay, moving on now to, I usually call this part the sort of monster of the week, but we didn't really have a sort of overall villain, like, it was more of a sort of overall concept, as it mm. were, um, that the Doctor kind of had to sort of stop or sort of, like, maintain. But we did have a few sort of uh, alien creatures uh, in the anti-zone that we met, uh, first of which being Ribbons. Uh, so what did you yeah. think of him? I liked him. I liked him. Yeah. He felt a bit much like John Sim, but I get in, like, um, playing Razor last series. Um, oh, with, yeah. with the voice, with the voice and everything, but yeah, you know, that's good overall, point, overall, I, I didn't think, I, you know, I, I didn't think it was anything special. But he wasn't anything bad either. He was certainly very entertaining, and I loved how persistent he was, and like pretty much almost killing uh, Graham multiple yeah. times. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I, I quite liked it. It was a nice little element, and I think just overall with the monsters in this episode, I liked the fact that there was just quite a few. <laughs> yeah, didn't yeah, have to that's... make much sense, really. Yeah, yeah, quite a few sort of small ones. Um, yeah, I agree with you there. I think I, I thought the design of him was really nice. Um, yeah, yeah. I've, that's something I've said pretty much about all the villains this series. I thought they've looked really good. Um, like obviously Tim Shaw and the Sajarians and now uh, Ribbons. Uh, I just think the costume design and the sort of makeup's been really nice. Mm, um, yeah. So yeah, like there's not really much to say about him. I did think I did really like the scene where he got killed by. The villain we're going to come on to next the uh flesh moths i thought they'd just do that sort of stereotypical thing of all the sort of flesh moths like uh surrounding him and then they cut away to something else but now you actually did see his his dead uh skeleton which i thought was pretty pretty horrible um, yeah i was quite surprised when they did that but I, I, it was when it was when the moth crawled out of his eye hole i was like oh god oh. it's just oh yeah so yeah what did you think of those 
I thought I liked them because they were creepy and they were actually kind of like because I'm not a big arachnophobe, so I wasn't really yeah. that frightened of arachnids in the UK. But no. this one made my skin crawl a little bit because it's like, oh, they're just it's the fact that yeah. they're not only like because they are just like pretty much just just big moths, but the fact yeah. that they eat people and will rip anything apart that moves. It was quite on edge, and they actually did a really good job with like directing and portraying that element of them. Um, yeah. So yeah. yeah, I really really did like that. Yeah, they they were they were really sort of creepy, and they they were they were the kind of sort of monster that just make you sort of shiver like oh like yeah 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 sight of them. I I couldn't help thinking when I was watching it that uh, Karen Gillan would have been terrified of them because I don't know if you know, but she's like terrified of moths. She said it. All oh, right. I think it was like some like children in need thing like years ago, and this kid asked her like, "Oh, what are you scared of?" and and she was like moths. And Matt Smith just started laughing. Do you have any phobias? Moths. <laughs> they look like they're just erratic. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Uh, yeah, that would have been great. Yeah. But, um, I'd, I'd like to. I'd like to know what she thought of it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like I said, the they were the sort of only uh, the only monsters really of this uh, kind of episode. So moving on now to the. Uh, Direction. What did you think of the direction of this episode? Um, you know, nothing to stand out, but look beautiful. I think yeah. all the direction in the series look beautiful, but I think I've kind of normalised to it now, where I'm not like whoa yeah. every episode. But I think yeah, it might it look pretty good, and I'm and I'm quite happy with what they're doing with this series really overall. Um, yeah. but no, no, yeah, I think it was pretty good. Yeah, I agree. Really, I think I, I really like the uh, sort of contrasting colours between like the sort of Norwegian setting and like the anti zone, like the, the Nor- like Norway was sort of sort of dull yeah, yeah. grey, green, blue colours. And then the anti zone was really dark and like sort of harsh light. Um and and the uh the sort of solitract zone like at the end the just the bright white light. Uh I thought there was some really nice sort of contrast in all those scenes, um, which was just Sort of quite uh, aesthetically pleasing, really. Um, yeah. Also, so, something I just did, I want to mention, which I was quite ashamed I didn't notice, as someone who's who's quite into like film and TV and media, I was quite ashamed I didn't notice this. But apparently, all the uh, shots in the oh, like, yeah. opposite universe yeah, yeah. were like mirrored, um, so everything was sort of the op- on the opposite side and like mirrored, which I thought was just uh, such a clever like technique um like so subtle that some people didn't even notice but for the people that did um yeah i just thought it was such a great idea uh, did you did you notice yeah i absolutely did i think it was a great bit i think i kind of just tuned out of it once i got used to it but i think and i think i put this on twitter as well that I mean, as a as a media studies student, as a, someone who wants to go into that anyway, I was thoroughly impressed with the dedication for such a small thing yeah. to be able to. I mean, like when you're storyboarding that, like an episode, for example, and you can plan this out and go, oh, actually, we want this in reverse, like mirrored, because it's obviously a mirror universe. Mm. For the director to actually go through and film everything opposite to what's on the storyboard, yeah, it must just so they can flip it in post, I think is incredible because. I just, I just think that's uh, it's dedication for such a small detail that oh, makes yeah. shows like Doctor Who, and I really do like that. Yeah, I think that's a really good way of putting it. Like, it's just, it, it was just really sort of like when you did notice it, it was, oh wow, that's brilliant. Um, yeah, like, yeah. Because it's such a small thing, it, it kind of makes it more impressive. If you know what mm. I mean, they've they've taken the time to do it um, when not everyone's going to notice it. Um, but the, for the few that did, I think it really sort of had a great effect um, on the sort of atmosphere of the episode. Um, yeah. Because because before you sort of found out that that mirrored universe was like a trap and it was evil, like it kind of gave you that sort of foreshadowing towards it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I, think, yeah. I, I think that as an element, I, I did really quite like that. Um, you know, from a filmmaking point of view, I think that's. Yeah. It's extra effort, and when people put extra effort in, I think people appreciate it more. Yeah, I think that's exactly what I'm getting with this. Yeah, and it's it's one of the things that's kind of made me, like I said, over the last few days, really come to appreciate uh, this episode. Just sort of the the craft and the and the the sort of 
uh, yeah. thing that went into it. Like, it just seems v- a lot more sort of uh, not. It doesn't seem like more hard work's gone into it. That makes it seem like the other episodes have been sort of lazy. But it, you know what I mean, like. It, yeah, it, I think it's. I think it's dedication to such a small detail that really pays off and shows the passion behind the project. Yeah. Um, I think all the episodes of the series have been done very, very well. But I think it's it's the little things and the little things in films and TV have always made me like smile and go, you know what? That's dedication. That's passion yeah. for what you're doing, and that yeah. impresses me really yeah definitely um Um, okay moving on now to some of the characters of this episode obviously starting off with the doctor uh what did you think of her in this episode were there any standout scenes um generally i thought i mean there wasn't much standout to me but i really love geordie whitaker as the doctor i think he's a fantastic doctor and i'm really really loving her performance um you know, I think the serious can do incredibly well, um, and the comedy side of it's actually getting a little bit better now. I think so. I yeah. think um, I'm really, really liking her. Yeah, I don't yeah. have any more else to say. I think she's great. I think she's definitely got the balance right with the comedy. Oh, part. And I think, yeah. I think, uh, I think she had a lot in this episode, sort of uh, techno babble, so to speak, to, to <laughs> say, which I think, yeah. which I think uh, she did well. I do think, I do think. Her, we still need that sort of big defining like speech. I don't I mean, uh-huh. a few like over the series, but I think I think we really need one that when you think of the Thirteenth Doctor, you'll instantly think think uh-huh. of that scene. Because um, like at the moment, there's a sort of yeah, like, I know what I mean. kind of undecided bes- between if you know what I mean. So I kind of hope I hope we get like a big scene like that in the finale or maybe even the new year's episode um, i think we will i think we will and i'm not gonna gonna go on it too much because this is about episode nine but i think there's from what i've heard from the theories and, and the and the rumors episode and that sort of 10. thing I think we'll, episode 10 and the new year special i think we're in for something yeah. massive and i think geordie's gonna really push it and bring it home uh for those last yeah. couple of episodes yeah so i i'm definitely getting really excited for the for the finale now um mm-hmm. but yeah i just think uh Jodie was really good in this episode. Um, I don't, I'm not, I can't think of any particular moments that I like loved more than others. But yeah, I just think yeah. she's really sort of found her feet now, and it's just really, really sort of fun to watch. And more yeah, than anything else. absolutely. Um, okay, moving on to Yaz now. What did you think of her? Um, all right. Again, I think yeah. we've had we've had fo- AIR's focused episodes. I don't think this was one of them. I think she was quite background. But again, I feel like I don't mind that now. I, I, yeah. I, I was a bit concerned at the beginning because I was like, okay, we're about five episodes in and we haven't had one that's focused on Yaz yet. We need something to develop her character. But hey, I've, we've seen that. We've had her developed a little bit. And to be honest, I'm happy with where she's at the moment. I'm happy with what she's doing in this episode. And I'm sure they're all going to have a big part to play in the finale and the New Year special. So I'm looking forward to that. I think this was more about Graham and Grace. If it's going to be emotional, yeah on that front you cannot have another companion taking all the limelight she got more to do than ryan i think so i think that was you know, i think that kind of worked but um again it's much more of a graham focused episode so ryan and yaz were very background but i didn't mind it that's the thing yeah i feel like if this episode had come like in the first sort of few episodes of the series we'd have those same concerns that we did before like oh yaz is like hardly there at all but then we had like episodes like Demons of the Punjab and stuff like that that kind of uh, uh, made up for like the lack of her um, in the previous half of the series. So it's not as sort of concerning now when she's not as prioritised, if you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so yeah, w- moving on to Ryan now, what did you think of him? I think he did a pretty good job. Yeah. Yeah, I think like like Yaz, there's not really much to say about him. Um, but yeah, I think he was did a good job with what we what he was given. And like I said before, I really liked his scenes with Hannah. I think it was nice to see him out of his comfort zone in that in in that respect. Yeah. 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 Uh, okay. So moving on to Graham now, we've already talked quite a bit about him. But is there anything else you want to add? Um, t- I don't know what I've said. I think just again, Bradley Walsh's putting forward an amazing performance. I think 
Graham feels like the perfect mix of Wilf and uh, Rory's dad, and I feel like it works. Yeah. He has done every episode, and I think he's done an excellent job. I I really like him, and I really like Bradley Walsh anyway. So this just helps because yeah. he's just brilliant. He's funny, but he's also incredibly emotional, and uh, he can do it so well. He can yeah. do it incredibly well. Just the fact that he can he can have like scenes where he's being hilarious. And then scenes where he's like uh, really emotional within like ten minutes of each other is just fantastic, and I I just love him. He's definitely my favorite of the mm-hmm. companions this series, and he might even go down as being one of my favorite companions ever. Uh, I just think he's fantastic. Um, so moving on to some of the guest characters now, uh, starting off with uh, Hannah. What did you think of her? I know we've kind of touched on that we weren't as keen on the on the guest characters but yeah yeah what do you think of hannah um i thought she was quite good i thought she did a great job i'm glad the fact that they um developed that idea of having a um you know visually um disabled character into it i think that worked really well and i quite liked that element of it um i would have liked more to do with her and more elements of it i think there's a part of me that's a little bit disappointed because they, they, they removed a whole monster from this episode. Yeah, and I, I feel like I feel like the the whole idea of something stalking the woods like that, I think that would have been a very easy I mean, a horror concept with a blind character is yeah. a very one that would work so well and something I was looking yeah. forward to actually. So I was a little bit disappointed, but it wasn't that. But you know, it was a great episode, but I think they could have done something a bit different with um those characters in particular. Yeah, I did think it did kind of annoy me a bit that that Hannah was made to be sort of quite a vulnerable character. I mean, I know she's with a disability like that, you're always going to be sort of more Mm. vulnerable than most people. Like, by default, I mean, obviously, uh, there's going to be exceptions, but it it just felt like... I felt like we needed a scene where she kind of proved everyone else wrong and, like, proved that she doesn't need kind of to be sort of protected all the time. If you know what I mean, so it, I think it would have been really uh, nice to see her come, like, uh, to have to kind of fight against a monster or something. Uh, yeah. Just to kind of prove that, if you know what I mean. I mean, even when she rejected the um, the Solitract, that would have been a decent call for the father to go. Yeah. Wait a minute, you, you aren't you aren't my wife then, but he still he still latched on. So the whole purpose yeah. of the daughter even going into the solid track was just pointless anyway. So I don't yeah. even stuff like that. I just think could have been done a little, handled a little bit better. But it's only minor things, and that's the thing with this episode. There's minor things that stick out, but mostly it's a great episode. And it's a really enjoyable episode, but it's, a, it's it's the minor things that can be nitpicked on in reviews, which is what we're doing now. But I think yeah. overall the episode's still thoroughly enjoyable. Oh god, yeah, um, yeah, definitely agree with you. I did, yeah, you, I did want to like say like how you said about Hannah going to the Solar Track universe being really pointless. I did think her like instantly knowing that her mum wasn't her mum. I did think that was a bit sort of like unrealistic. Like, she, well, like, you know, what? I I would be inclined to disagree with that a little bit. I think mainly because I think it's the and that is the one utilised element of the character being blind that the other senses are kind of increased and she would know straight away from, you know, the the, the smell, the feel of the person that yeah. it isn't them. And I think it, it, it's not so much... Because, I mean, you know, anyone could look like someone and it instantly catches your eye and you, your mind connects it, but she cannot see that. She cannot see her mum. Yeah. So she relies on her other feelings, which her natural senses are telling her, that's not my mum. Might sound like my mum, but it's not my mum. Yeah, um, I, I suppose. Yeah. yeah, you are right. Actually, I suppose. Like, say with Graham. Like, obviously, because he's not blind. Like, he saw Grace straight away, mm-hmm. and was instantly like, "Oh my god, it's Grace!" Like, I can't believe it's you. Like, thank God. So yeah. See, with Hannah being blind, she kind of has to take that sort of extra bit of like, she has to be a bit apprehensive anyway. So that kind of played to her advantage, I guess, uh, when trying to work out or when sort of deciding that that wasn't her real mum. Yeah, I I, I do agree with you there, actually. Um, Yeah, I think, like we said, her and her family weren't the best characters, but I think it was 
I think they could have they could have done more with it. But like I said, yeah, I, I agree. I agree. I, I think I think just that um, element of it. I think there's there's it it everything lends itself to explanation, but it's not clear. Um, yeah. So it, it's it's you know it's something that's kind of mixed up. So maybe there are other reasonings, but I've just missed it and that sort of thing. But you know. Yeah. Yeah, I thought she was all right, but there was nothing much to her. There was just nothing really. I mean, I liked her, but that's it. I mean, like, there's nothing more to that. I can't really go in depth because there's nothing really there to go in depth about. Yeah, no, um, that's great, I think. I think, like you said, yeah. like we are nitpe- nitpicking, and I think the this the small that, like yeah. that we do have, like they're sort of uh, overrided by like mm-hmm. our like uh, praises of the episode, like why we said those scenes with Grace and Gray, and like. They just make up for those tiny little negatives. Um, so I, yeah, overall, I just lo- I think this episode has been one of the best so far. Yeah, I, I quite I see. I, I don't mind it, and I and I think that's one of the things is that um, if someone says something negative in a review, it doesn't mean they hate the episode. It means that they've yeah. found something that didn't really appeal to them as much as other people. But that's absolutely fine. Nothing wrong with yeah. that. I think that's fair. I think, you know, this this isn't my favourite episode of the series, but I think it's a pretty strong episode of the series, and I think it's going to stand out in the future when we look back. Yeah, um, So I, I think, yeah, I think it's definitely one of the most enjoyable ones. I think, yeah, so there's nothing, you know, there's nothing wrong with, um, you know, the nitpicks, because you kind of have to in a review. I mean, if you couldn't have anything negative, it would be a bit unrealistic. So, yeah, yeah but they are nitpicks, and that's a good sign, because the episode overall was pretty damn strong. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you there. So, final character, we just want to touch on briefly because uh, we have talked about her already is grace and i've put in brackets kind of uh, <laughs> so yeah any i know we talked quite at length about those scenes with her and graham but is there anything else you want to say about sharon d clark's like performance in this episode when you're talking about Sharon D. clark's performance are you focusing directly on grace or all of her performances uh just in this episode just grace and like not the it's... not the frog then oh yeah we actually uh, <laughs> I don't know why that's slipped my mind we should we probably should talk about that um yeah uh, Grace, yeah a uh, frog form uh yeah so yeah start we'll start <laughs> with normal grace uh I, I, it's not even normal grace but normal compared to the other four yes the one that isn't small and green i yeah. like i like grace i really like sharon d clark and i loved her in the first episode i love the elements in arachnids i love her voice she's got like a morgan freeman type yeah. voice where it's really appealing and i quite like yeah. listening to her speak um she could narrate a book and i'd listen to it I'd, i love that but i think um i think with this i think I really liked her, and I think that's part of it. She was so appealing, and you kind of wanted her to go back with Graham, but you know she's not real, and I think that's yeah. really clever how she not only managed to act that, but how the writing was as well. The way she was like really, really appealing as a character to watch, and that's because she was not only trying to appeal to Graham, but the audience as well. It's kind of that like interactivity that a lot of TV shows try to strive towards. So I yeah, think as, as Grace, she was really, really good. Yeah, um... Yeah, I, I don't really have much to add to that, really. I think you've uh, uh, put it really well. So, yeah, shall we talk about her other form? I don't know how I've forgotten to mention that this far into the review. Um, but, yeah, uh, Grace, a.k.a. Frog, a.k.a. leader of the Solar Tract. Um, yeah. The one, the one thing that kind of divided uh, fans, I'd say, this episode... Um, the, and it kind of, I feel like it was the one scene that kind of made or broke your sort of opinion overall of the episode. So, mm. yeah, what did you think? I'm mixed, honestly. Yeah. I was expecting the episode because of the way Doctor Who TV hyped it up unnecessarily because I felt like we already knew about Grace. So I was expecting, like, when, especially when the whole, you know, it's, it's trying to appeal for people to stay there. The doctor's walking down a white corridor. It's building up emotionally. I'm thinking, Susan, River Song. Yeah. And, you know, someone will be there. Um, and Frog, it just caught me off guard. And I think I was just kind of like, what? And I was so like, I was disappointed at first because it was so weird and ridiculous. But I think yeah. looking back on it, actually, I think it works better. I think after rewatching it, I think... 
I think it works, and the reason it works is because it's, uh, you know, stuff like if it was Susan or River Song or any other companion that's died in the past who would have a voice to say, right? First of all, the 13th Doctor has already just decided to stay. She so doesn't need to be, you know, enticed any further. I mean, second of all, um, it's it, it would be quite easy fan service, which I don't know yeah. if it would feel right. I speak of like, oh, I would have loved it to have this, loved it to be this, but sometimes fans aren't always right if they did do that and it was done just horribly wrong then this episode would just drop even further in range yeah the idea of it being a frog is very traditional campy sci-fi and i love that i think the one criticism is that it should have it should have kept its mouth shut and it just had like a grace's voice kind of over the top so it kind of felt like some sort of god or alter being opposed to an actual frog um it was a frog in, in 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 person as a form that moved and looked at the Doctor whilst she could hear Grace's voice, but it didn't open its mouth because when it opens its mouth, it then goes from like sort of God of this universe to the Muppet Show very, yeah. very quickly. And yeah. I kind of it yeah. took me off guard so much that I was just I just I just shook my head like, is this happening? I don't what? So at first I was a bit disappointed and a bit confused. On rewatch, I can understand where they were coming from, but even something as simple as just not having the frog open its mouth and instead having Grace's voice kind of echo around the Doctor would have been so much more impactful, I feel. Something simple like that. Yeah, I I was definitely mixed at first. And I I have sort of... It has grown on me now, but I I sort of love it for all the wrong reasons. I mean, firstly, (laughs) I just love how that scene in the trailer for Series 11 where the Doctor's like... Uh, oh yeah kiss. <laughs> like all the people that were speculated as to who that was that like kiss was towards like uh they thought it was one of the companions or like a returning character and no it was a frog i just mm-hmm. thought that was brilliant and i don't know if chibnall did that on purpose i can't can't see how he would have really because i guess the trailer would have been made after the episode um, I don't know. I just, I just love but, it because everyone had so much expectations. But that's the thing, yeah. and that's what I love. I love when media can subvert your expectations like yeah. that. Um, and they've done it with a lot of things. Obviously, everyone thought Graham was going to die when Ryan called him granddad. That didn't happen, but yeah. it worked. And I think this doesn't work potentially as well as something else. But hey, I like it. It's, it's different. It's, it's funny. But I think what the only problem I have with it is it would have worked in any other. I would have worked in something like Kablam. I feel like with this. The emotional aspect was way, way big on the focus that it yeah. would have worked better as an emotional moment opposed to something that just made you burst out laughing. Yeah. Um. So yeah. it kind of took me out of it, but at the same time, hey, I didn't, I, I didn't hate it. Yeah. No, it it just was quite jarring, like because we'd had that sort of really emotional build up, like we said, all the scenes with Graham and Grace that we've talked about a lot, um, and then it was just a really massive change in tone uh and it like i think it you sort of that's one of the main things uh <clears throat> that you kind of come to appreciate more on rewatch because you kind of get used to it um and mm-hmm. i think it's interesting the the point you made about like it could have easily been a good op- good opportunity for fan service i think like i was saying this to someone the other day i think a lot of doctor who fans they want the show to sort of succeed and do well in the uh, viewing figures and stuff but they also want like fan service and honestly i don't i really don't think at, at this like at this point fans i don't think the two can coexist in the same in the show together because i feel like if you've got fan service then that kind of it kind of takes away your opportunity to gain more viewers because the mm. new viewers are just going to be like what is going on and then, so you've kind of got to make it fresh for yeah everybody. exactly I, I like that like, i was That's... saying the only place fans service really works like properly now is like other sort of forms of doctor who like big finish and stuff like because i feel like when fan service is used in the actual tv show it's always going to have that risk of like having a negative impact on how well the show does um mm-hmm. you know what i mean so as much as we'd love to see Susan back or River back or Missy or whatever, it, you kind of you've got to pick between wanting the show to do well or having fan service. Um, yeah, 
Absolutely. I think it's a good, a good mix, and I like, I like how Chibnall's taken this series without much fan service. So yeah. he's managed to build up the general audiences that I think, I don't know what to say. I, I, I think it is. I think you've got to kind of get the mix right. I think Moffat focused heavily on fan service in his run. Um, you know, classic Daleks, classic Cybermen, all that sort of stuff. You know, the Master, all that sort of lovely stuff was great, but it's too much. And it alienated normal fans to the point where it just doesn't work. Chibnall has made the show brand new, started from scratch, hasn't bombarded people with loads of Doctor Who knowledge. He's kept it easy to watch. I mean, for example, my grandparents and my mum never watched Doctor Who properly before now. I mean, they watched the occasional episode when it's on, like when I'm watching it. But, you know, all of them have watched this full series, and it's the first full series I've ever watched. And that, as a general consensus, is why the viewership's higher, because it's much easier to understand. It's much easier to get into, especially from a woman who fell to earth. Yeah. And although it's got loads of different elements, it's a really appealing show for a, load, a wide variety of different people now. So I think keep off that fan service and then... Let's wait till about New Year. Then let's bring in the Daleks. Let's reintroduce them. Give yeah, them a new look. Give yeah. them a new look. Describe them again. Show them how evil they can be. Give them that aspect that Russell T. Davis managed to give them in Dalek. That sort of fear of them. Um, and then go from there. And then, you know, in like a couple of series time, reintroduce the Cybermen or something. Just yeah. something like you can do loads of stuff with this show. You don't have to keep, you know, recycling the same characters just to keep fans on board. Fans are on board as well as normal audiences. If you want to make normal audiences into fans, you have to let them experience it in their own time to understand it and then bring back something the traditional fans love and go, oh, so that's what Daleks are, yeah. right? I get it now. I get why people love Daleks, yeah. Yeah, that's I, think, thing. I think you've explained that perfectly. I think, I think, and I think because Chibnall has kind of had this first series of his so fresh and, like, and like has been able to get those new viewers... I think that will mean he's he's mm. earned the sort of opportunity to in his later series bring back a few guest characters and and monsters and like mm. it won't be as risky as like when Moffat did it because he did it so often if you know what I mean uh so yeah I think you've really you've really hit the nail on the head there um so yeah I think that's I think that's pretty much it for this episode um so yeah to finish off could you kind of give me your overall thoughts on it takes you away and then kind of your score out of 10 at the end if you can um yeah i think it's a very very enjoyable episode i think it keeps itself to its first watch and the first initial reaction more than it lends to a rewatch i think in years to come i'd be more tempted to rewatch something like rosa than uh, this episode but overall it's a thoroughly enjoyable episode that has a few moments in it that kind of drag me out of it and it does move a little bit weirdly in the middle but overall thoroughly enjoyable um seven out of ten okay no. uh yeah i pretty much agree with you i think this was definitely the most ambitious episode so far in terms of the mm. plot and how complex it was but i do think even if it de- did take like a couple of watches i did think it paid off um i thought it was a really brilliant concept and i think one that could easily return again in the future and that i'd like to see return again um it had some fantastic scenes uh with grace and graham which i thought were the highlight of the episode um and that kind of made up the the kind of weak guest cast um that were like we said could have the story could have happened even if they weren't there um mm. but yeah i really like that um the uh monsters despite not having a massive impact on the story were really nice um the design and the sort of uh characters of them were really good uh direction uh was uh, great again the really nice contrasting colors between all the different sort of uh lands like norway and the anti zone and all that uh, was really nice and of course those really clever mirroring camera shots. Mm -hmm. Uh, All the TARDIS team were on form once again. Obviously, the highlight being Graham. The rest of them were really good as well. Um, Like I said, I liked how Ryan took that sort of parental, uh, uh, like, responsibility in this episode 
Uh, mm. I thought it was really nice to see, especially compared to sort of how Yaz did it in the Witchfinders. Mm-hmm. And yeah, overall, I think this probably is the episode that has kind of, I've my opinion of it has changed the most after rewatching it because um, I was really unsure what I thought at first, but now after rewatching it and thinking about it more, I really do like it. So I think I'm going to give it an eight point five out of ten. Uh, yeah, nice. Yeah, I think I think that's a fair enough score. I think it definitely, I definitely just appreciate how sort of much it tried to do and how well it did it for the most part. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for this review. Thank you, George, for joining me. No worries, uh, I've enjoyed it. It's been great. Uh, and yeah, like I said at the beginning, do go and check out uh, George's YouTube channel, Ace Creep- Creeper. Um, you've got uh, uh, this Christmas like charity event thing that you're doing soon, aren't you? Do you want to promo that quickly? Yeah, I can do. Um, so on Sunday the 16th from uh, 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. UK time, I'll be doing a 12-hour live stream to raise uh, money for the Young Minds charity, which is a mental health uh, charity for young people, teenagers, that sort of thing. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. We've got a few creators coming in and doing some stuff and having a few quizzes and playing some Doctor Who related video games and that sort of thing. Just a bit of fun to generally try, uh, try and encourage people to, you know, get this charity and, you know, make some money for it. Just such a wonderful cause, really. So, yeah. Well, I think I think you're brilliant for doing that. I don't know how you're going to you survive the 12 hours. <laughs> well, yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll give it a good crack. I'm, I'm, I'm sure yeah. I'll be dead by the end of it, but we'll, we'll try. <laughs> yeah, I'll definitely try and... Uh, watch for some of it maybe not the whole 12 hours but I'll definitely, oh, no. <laughs> I'll definitely join you for some of it um, oh, that's great. yeah that's I'm really great. really looking forward to it I think it's gonna be brilliant well, uh, thank you very much so am I <laughs> so uh, yeah that's pretty much it um, uh, thank you all for watching this video um, and I will see you all next time for my final series 11 review uh, where I'll be discussing my opinions hopefully with another special guest of the Battle of Ranskor Av Kolos. I think I've just about got that you've, name. You've got that bang on, I think, yeah. Yeah, it took me a while, but I think I've just about got it now. Uh, but yeah, uh, like I said, thank you very much for watching, and I, I will see you all next time. Bye. Bye-bye.